So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and for my YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to be joined by one of the stars of Wentworth Prison, the amazingly talented Pamela Rabe. Thank you so much for joining me, Pamela. <laughs> You're making me blush, Matthew. Thank, thank goodness nobody can see. Um, <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here and I'm thrilled to be uh, I don't know, invading a few hospital rooms. <laughs> now, I mean, before we touch upon the amazing Wentworth Prison, which I'm absolutely loving, uh, for you, what is life like? Because obviously you're over in Australia. I mean, how are things over there at the moment? Well, they're not a lot different from anywhere else around the globe, Matthew. Uh, the only exception being is that um, although for the first you know, a couple of waves of this pandemic, Australia was very lucky in, in uh, partly being a big island and um, making some pretty um, hard choices very early on. They managed to kind of keep COVID infection numbers very low. Uh, but I do think that probably um, lured us into kind of a sense of a false sense of security, which meant that we're less prepared now for the Delta variant and our vaccine. We didn't have enough vaccine around, basically. So there's this mad rush now to uh, get enough supply and to get everybody vaccinated, particularly now as the Delta variant has uh, cropped up, given us a big outbreak in um, Sydney, which has started to um, spread all over the country and into New Zealand as well. So currently Melbourne's in a uh, lockdown number six. It's a hard lockdown, which means we're curfewed uh, uh, from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. and we can only leave our homes for four or five very um, strict reasons. And um, and uh, it's I said, let's we're all in the slot. <laughs> we're all we're all riding this wave and waiting it out, uh, and but all queuing up as fast as we can to get um, our double vaxxers in our arms and work out how to live with um, COVID-19. Well, I mean, obviously, from all of us here in the UK, we send our love to you all, and we hope that obviously you can get out of lockdown soon. Um, now, we Thank must, you. of course, talk about Wentworth Prison. Uh, you, of course, play Joan the Freak Ferguson, who is just such an iconic character, has been in it since the beginning. So for you, what is it that, that you love so much about the character? And, and what is it you love about the show? Because it, it seems to be so popular. Uh, it's, um, it's hard because... <laughs> I love it. Uh, I, 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 my character arrived at the beginning of season two. Um, uh, so I already had an uh, uh, I can't remember whether the series had actually the one had gone to air yet, but I certainly on the grapevine had heard that it was a very good show, a quality show. And uh, I had a lot of um, friends and colleagues who were involved in that cast, who were the kind of foundation cast members. So I knew it was a good thing. I was very excited, but I had no idea it was going to have the impact that it has had around the globe. Um, I was certainly aware, because I was just starting out as an actor when the first original Prisoner series on which Wentworth was based uh, was on air and I knew the impact that that had, but it was a different world. It's a different series and a very, very different world and a different way of delivering entertainment to, to people. And the global reach of this new imagining of Wentworth Prison is just, gobsmacking. I mean, the kind of um, response I get, from, whether it's letters from people or people who kind of rock up and speak to you in the street want to tell you how much they love the show, um, you know, want me to tell them what's going to happen next, all that kind of investment that fans have in it is uh, it's extraordinary. And I would never have expected that. It's, it, it, it's the icing on the cake in terms of being involved in it as a show. The real joy has just been to be working on uh, for such a, a, a long time. The, the end of this final season will be 100 episodes of which my character was involved in, a, you know, a healthy proportion of. And uh, to be involved in such quality television over such a long period of time is a real gift with, you know, to be working with such talented performers, writers, producers, directors, and camera crews, uh, you know, is, uh, they, they don't come along very often and I feel very lucky. I mean, the character of Joan, of course, is she's widely loved, but she's such an interesting character because every so often you think that she's going to become nice and she's going to do something nice. <laughs> and then suddenly she does something and you go, oh, no, I don't think she's nice anymore. So, I mean, for you, what's your interpretation of, of her as a character? And, and I mean, I imagine probably you prefer playing her evil, but, but it must be nice <laughs> to play those different levels. 
Absolutely. I mean, I was surprised to hear you say wild, widely loved because I thought you were going to say widely hated. Maybe it is a character that people love to hate, um, but I love her complexity. It certainly is a lot of fun, um, um, you know, being malevolent, actually, particularly uh, uh, what I find, you know, just to be nasty is, is not particularly interesting or, or challenging, but to be somebody who has a complex, um, uh, you know, series of um, uh, motivations and flaws that lead them to kind of pressure within themselves, the pressure of wearing a mask, of hiding parts of themselves from themselves. Um, and that's really delicious to play and uh, it's difficult, but it's challenging. It keeps me occupied and keeps me busy and keeps me on my toes. But it also means that uh, out of that, that you know, the idea of things erupting all the time can give the audiences uh, uh, a, a few squeals and a few scares every now and again. And also um, just a, a, a treat every once in a while to, um, you know, particularly when they can spot something that they know is going on with that character that even perhaps the character herself doesn't know is there or certainly the people who are around her. Um, uh, are seeing so you know yes it's hugely fun i mean obviously during the the first episode of the series we see that um uh, she just has such a kind of a desire for revenge against uh, mr jackson i mean <laughs> is that something that over the series that that she will get her revenge or or will she calm down a bit i mean what what do fans have to look forward to with, with her her journey this year this series Matthew, i can't answer that of course <laughs> that would be dead. like how many spoilers would be in that um but i think all i can say is that um you know, that uh, at the end of um, this last season eight, yeah, no, finally her, uh, Joan Ferguson came home. She finally, uh, Joan Ferguson met Kath Maxwell, actually, you know, that she recovered her memories. And certainly the reasons, I mean, although she was being bombarded, I think, with uh, a lot of facts as Kath Maxwell, she had no memory of the things that she'd done and felt like a very different person and now, those memories have become placed and she's owning them now which means she's also owning the history behind some of those um, facts and uh, and i think there should be a few people just watching their backs because you know now um now that joan knows who did what and where they are <laughs> There's going to be a lot of urges that I think that those opening shots of this new season uh, were kind of tapping into is that, you know, and in fact, part of the challenge is going to be how can she keep those uh, urges under control. And we must also, of course, just ask you as, as Pamela, I mean, what's your opinion of, of Joan? I mean, do you love her? Do you hate her? What, what's your opinion of her? Oh, well, I have, of course I love her, but I mean, that's a just... That is kind of acting 101, is that you always have to love your characters no matter what they do. Um, because if you don't love them, you don't constantly um, analyze, explore, and scrutinize their behavior and why they behave the way they behave. You have to, you have to, you have to walk in their shoes. So, um, of course, I love her. Uh, and, I, and I'm certainly not interested in judging her. Uh, it's actually, uh, I, you know, I don't condone her actions or her behavior but I'm fascinated uh, and I relish the opportunity to try to understand why she might do what she do and give, be given a chance to kind of explore it, unleash some of those, maybe we all have parts of ourselves that um, we may not be very proud of or urges that we have less control over than we would like. And it, um, you know, it gives you a chance to kind of unleash a few of those. <laughs> now, of course, this is the final series. I mean, for you, are you gonna miss working on this show? Cause it does look like a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, you know, people describe it as, you know, the, the, it's just one of those shows that, that, although obviously not suitable for children, it is just, you know, <laughs> the world loves it and it, it, people are addicted to it. So, I mean, I imagine similar to the audience, you guys as actors are going to miss that show. Absolutely. Not least because it was uh, a, a most wonderful work family. Uh, and the fact that it was in a prison setting, meant uh, that quite unusually for screen production, uh, the whole, there was one facility that we did everything in. 
you, um, you know, the production departments, the art department, the wardrobe department, the post-production, editing suites, um, the prison cells and all the locations, the writer's room, all of these things uh, were in one building, which meant we had a kind of, um, up until the pandemic hit, relatively free access to all those departments. And, um, and it's, I think, part of the reason why this particular incarnation of Wentworth Prison has been so successful is that everybody's invested so deeply in making it, being, making it the best it can be, could be. And uh, I will miss that very, very much. And having said that, you know, it's, it's a great idea for a story. I'm looking forward to somebody else picking it up and creating their own, whatever it is, 20, 2028, 2046, reimagining the Wentworth Prison. <laughs> Now, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. But before we go, have you got any messages you'd like to give to any of the patients who are currently listening in hospital at the moment? Anything you'd like to say to them at all? Uh, just that it's so lovely to be given the privilege of um, being an earworm for you for a few minutes here with Matthew. And that I send you um, love and strength. Be strong. Be good. And, uh, and you know, know that you're in, in the best hands. All the yes. very best. It has been an absolute pleasure, Pamela. Of course, people can watch Wentworth Prison. Uh, it is on every Tuesday evening at 10 p.m. on Five Star, and you can catch the uh, series so far on My Five. Thank you so much, Pamela. It's been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure, Matthew. Take care. <laughs>